You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, February 8th, 2021, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. IFC said it will release the Sebastian Stan Denise Goff film Monday in theaters and on pay-per-view platforms on April 16th. Set in Greece, the film is about the whirlwind weekend romance of two strangers, Chloe and Mickey. Director Argyris Papimpopoulos said in a statement Friday, In many ways, the film has become even more relevant in this current environment as all relationships got challenged during the lockdown and Chloe and Mickey's story is a very realistic take on relationships. At a time when things have started getting more optimistic in the world and a summer trip to Greece, crowded parties, people kissing and having fun is something we all long for. I believe the timing is perfect to release the film and the fact that it found a home at IFC Films makes my smile a little bigger. Stan is known for portraying uh, for his portrayal of Bucky Barnes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He will be seen in the Disney Plus series The Falcon, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Goff's uh, credits include Titanic, Blood and Steel, Colette, and The Other Land. Michael B. Jordan celebrated on Instagram his late Black Panther co-star Chadwick Boseman, historic four posthumous Screen Actor Guild Award nominations. Uh, John Jordan captioned a gallery of photos of Bozeman on movie set four, still setting the bar high. Miss you, big homie. The post has gotten about 1.5 million likes since Bozeman, who died of cancer in August at the age of 43, was nominated by SAG for Best Actor in a Film and Best Supporting Actor in a Film for his performances in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and The Five Bloods. He was also nominated as uh, part of the cast of Toe's two movies for Best Ensemble in the Film, bringing it to his total of nominations to four, more than any other artist this or any other year. Actor and writer Dan Levy joked about the success of his comedy Shit's Creek while he was hosting this weekend's edition of Saturday Night Live. Levy told the audience in his opening monologue, the last 12 months have quite literally changed my life in so many ways, both good and not so good. Levy continued, some good. People finally started watching our show Shit's Creek. We were fortunate enough to win nine Emmys this year. Unbelievable, beyond a dream come true. The not so good, those Emmys were quite literally thrown at us by a stranger in a hazmat suit. The good, I've been getting stopped on the street by all different kinds of people, which is new and fun and different. The not so good, those people are mainly screaming "eel" at me, which is a, which was a line I wrote for the show that will now haunt for me haunt me for the rest of my life. Levy also appeared in a sketch about friends, uh, Beck Bennett, Kyle Mooney, Chris Red, and Heidi Gardner, who gather for a Super Bowl party and boast about how careful they have been playing it during the coronavirus pandemic. Sitting in the living room, they take off their face masks and reveal they have been traveling, wrestling, shopping, eating in restaurants, having unsafe sex with strangers, and carrying a vaccine around in a vial instead of actually taking it. The segment ended with the pals eating chill out uh, out of a communal pot with their hands and realized they can't smell or taste it. Loss of taste and smell can be symptoms of the coronavirus. That's no cast member is Kate McKinnon, then showed up as Dr. Anthony Fauci and said, what you just saw was the wrong way to Super Bowl. That's why I partnered with Cheetos and Durex condoms to remind you to Super Bowl responsibly. At home, in a mask, lights out, no friends. A four-part docu-series about filmmaker Woody Allen, Mia Farrow, and their daughter Dylan is set to debut on HBO on February 21st. Helmed by Kirby Dick, Amy Zerling, and Amy Hurdy, Allen vs. Farrow goes behind decades of sensational headlines to reveal the private story of one of Hollywood's most notorious and public scandals. The accusation of sexual abuse against Woody Allen involving Dylan, his then 7-year-old daughter with Mia Farrow, their subsequent custody battle, the revelation of Allen's relationship with Farrow's daughter, Sunyi Previn, and the controversial aftermath in the years that follow. HBO also said the program will include home movie footage, court documents, police evidence, never-before-seen audio tapes, and exclusive in-depth interviews with Mia Farrow, Dylan Farrow, Ronan Farrow, family friend Carly Simon, prosecutor Frank Mako, relatives, investigators, experts, and other first-hand eyewitnesses. 
Allen has denied any wrongdoing regarding Dylan Farrell's allegations, which she has publicly discussed for decades, but which she has attracted fresh attention in the Me Too era. Allen is the Oscar-winning writer and director whose many classic films include collaborations with Mia Farrow, such as Broadway Danny Rose, Hannah and Her Sisters, and The Purple Rose of Cairo. Last year, a publisher canceled the planned publication of Allen's memoirs amid a backlash from Dylan Farrell's supporters. Allen and Farrell were a married couple from 1980 to 1992. Allen married Previn, uh, 50, in 1997. They are still together and have two adopted children. Allen's latest films were 2019's A Rainy Day in New York and 2020's Ripkin's Festival. A prequel to the contemporary western Yellowstone is in the works at Paramount+. Plus. The streaming service said Friday it will run a preview of Why 1883 during the Super Bowl on Sunday. The series follows the Dutton's family as they embark on a journey west through the Great Plains towards the last bastion of an untamed America. It is a stark retelling of Western expansion and an intense study of one family fleeing poverty to seek a better future in America's promised land, Montana. No casting has been announced for the new show, which is expected to debut this year. Starring Kevin Costler, Kelly Riley, Cole Hauser, and Wes Bentley, Yellowstone follows the wealthy and powerful Duttons as they interact with real estate developers and the U.S. government while trying to maintain the enormous cattle ranch that has been in their family for generations. The series is going into their fourth season. Sci-Fi has announced the current fourth season of its female-driven supernatural western Winona Earp will be its last. Starring Melanie Scarfano as a titular heroine, the series finale is slated to air April 9th. Uh, Scarfano said on, on Friday, I'm really proud of what we've accomplished over these four seasons and so excited to get to watch the second half of season four together. There will be tears, but there will also be laughs and crop tops and family. The show's cast also includes Tim Rosen, Dominique Provis Chartley, uh, Catherine Barrow, and Greg Lawson. Uh, showrunner Emily Andres said in a statement, I'd like to thank our wonderful cast and crew, all of whom were instrumental in bringing Winona Earp to our loyal and passionate audience. We couldn't be more prouder of these last six episodes of Sci-Fi and are thrilled to share them with our beloved fans who have changed our lives forever. Fox News Media announced Friday it canceled its highly rated show hosted by Lou Dobbs one day after he was named in a $2.7 billion defamation suit filed by voting technology company Smartmatic. The media company didn't disclose why Lou Dobbs Tonight was benched from the Fox Business lineup. The show will be replaced by Fox Business Tonight with hosts Jackie DeAngelis and David Ashman. A uh, statement to NBC News said, as we said in October, Fox News Media regularly commands have been placed to launch new formats as appropriate post-election, including on Fox Business. This is part of those planned changes. Dobbs began hosting the program on Fox in 2011 after rising to fame on CNN. In response to the news of Dobbs' departure, Trump, uh, former President Trump issued a statement to the New York Times calling the show the host great. Uh, he said, nobody loves America more than Lou. He had a large and loyal following that will be watched closely for his next move, and that, follows, and that following includes me. Dobbs was one of the several defendants named in a 285-page defamation lawsuit filed Thursday by a voting technology company that accused the network and former President Donald Trump's lawyers of launching a def, uh, disinformation campaign. Along with Dobbs, the lawsuit named the Fox Corporation, Fox News Network, network host Maria Bartolomeo, uh, Janine Pirro, and Trump's legal team members Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell. Uh, the suit reads, defendants decided to tell people that the election was stolen from President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. They needed a villain. They needed someone to blame. They needed someone who they could get others to hate. A, good, uh, a story of good versus evil, the type that would incite an angry mob, only works if the storyteller provides the audience with someone who personifies evil. Smartmatic, incorporated in Delaware with U.S. operations based in Florida, provided election technologies and software only in Los Angeles County, California, during the 2020 presidential election, the company said. But defendants spread false information that it was used in many states with close outcomes. Defendants also invented the fake narrative that Smartmatic was a Venezuelan company run by corporate socialist dictators and that Smartmatic stole the election from Trump and rigged it to Biden 
according to the complaint. Nick Cannon has resumed working with Viacom CBS following his firing in the summer of 2020. Variety reported Thursday that Cannon and VH1, a network owned by Viacom CBS, has restarted production on Cannon's long running series While and Out. Viacom CBS cut ties with Cannon in July after the actor and television personality made anti Semitic remarks on his podcast. Viacom CBS said at the time, Viacom CBS condemns bigotry of any kind, and we categorically denounce all forms of anti-Semitism. We have spoken with Nick Cannon about an episode of his podcast, Cannon Class, on YouTube, which uh, promoted hateful speech and spread anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Cannon subsequently apologized to the Jewish community for his hurtful remarks. Cannon has since taken steps to educate himself and we're working with Jewish groups, according to The Hollywood Reporter. A rep for Viacom CBS MTV Entertainment Group said, Nick has not only apologized and taken responsibility for his comment, but he has also worked to educate himself and others through engagement with Jewish leaders and on its platforms. Those efforts are of the utmost importance, and that's why we have invited him to rejoin the team. The rep added, only on a separate note, we just learned that he tested positive for covid and have reached out to him to wish him a speedy recovery. News broke this week that Cannon had tested positive for COVID-19 and is quarantining. Actress and comedian Nisi Nash will temporarily replace Cannon as host of the Fox series The Masked Singer as the actors are as the actor recovers. Timothy Chamolet plays Edgar, the son of Edward Scissorhand, and Winona Ryder reprises her role of Kim in a Cadillac commercial released Sunday. Johnny Depp played the titular humanoid in director Tim Burton's 1990 fantasy movie uh, Edward Scissorhands. Kim was his teenage love interest with whom he left be behind to live in a remote castle after the townsfolk who once praised his uniqueness later deemed him dangerous and turned on him. This weekend's 92nd Cadillac commercial shows the blade-fingered Egger having difficulty riding a bus, attending school science class, trying to catch a football, working in a restaurant, and getting his hand stuck in a chain-link fence. Egger's mom cheers him up by presenting him with an electric Cadillac Lyric, which has hand-free cruise control, which means he can drive it with his awkward appendages. Um, Kim can be heard saying in a voiceover as Denny Elfman's theme music plays in the background, and Egger drove into the sunset, but don't worry, he still made it home for dinner occasionally. Uh, Burton said in a press release, It is rare when a work you're proud of continues to live on and evolve with the times, even after 30 years. I'm glad to see Edgar coping with the new world. I hope both fans and those being introduced to Edward Scissorhands for the first time enjoy. Rock legend Bruce Springsteen can now be seen urging Americans to come together in a commercial for Jeep called The Middle. The two-minute ad was released Saturday on the eve of Super Bowl, the Super Bowl football game. The video shows Springsteen traveling in the Midwest region of the United States in a Jeep. <clears throat> Seen along his journey are a chapel, train, wheat field, dinner, uh, sorry, diner, horse, and an American flag. It's gotten nearly 8 million views since it was posted on YouTube. Springsteen says, it's no secret the middle has been a hard place to get to lately. Between red and blue, between servant and citizen, between our freedom and our fears, now fear has never are. He also added, as to freedom, it's not the property of just the fortunate few. It belongs to us all. Whoever you are, where are you from, it's what connects us, and we need that connection. We need the middle. We just have to remember the very soil we stand on is common ground. The commercial closes with the words, to the reunited states of America. The Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers announced this weekend that he is engaged, but he did not disclose his fiancée's name. Rodgers, who, who, as he accepted his 2020 Most Valuable Player Award at the NFL Honor Ceremony on Saturday night, said 2020 was definitely a crazy year filled with lots of change, growth, and some amazing memorable moments. Uh, 180 straight days of having my nose hair scraped, the plan for very little fans or no stands the entire season. I got engaged, and I played some of the best football of my career. 
AENews, People.com, and UsMagazine.com said that they uh, recently confirmed Rogers had been dating Big Little Lies actress Shalane Whitley. Whitley has now publicly addressed the alleged relationship. Rogers previously dated former race car driver Danik Patrick. They broke up in July before he and actress Olivia Munn were a couple. Christopher Plummer, the Oscar, Tony, and Emmy Award-winning actor best known for his role in The Sound of Music, has died at the age of 91. The actor died peacefully at his home in Connecticut with his wife Elaine Taylor by his side, as that confirmed to Deadline. Plummer's friend and manager Lou Pitt also confirmed his death to Variety. Pitt said in a statement, uh, Chris was an extraordinary man who deeply loved and respected his profession with great old-fashioned manners, self-deprecating humor, and the music of words. He was a national treasure who deeply relished his Canadian roots, through his art and humanity, he touched all of our hearts, and his legendary life will endure for all generations to come. He will forever be with us. No cause of death has been disclosed. Plummer portrayed Captain George Von Trapp in 1965's The Sound of Music. He won an Oscar for his role in 2010's Beginners, making him the oldest actor ever to win an, an, an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Plummer also notably starred in films The Insider, Twelve Monkeys, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered County, A Beautiful Mind, All the Money in the World, Knives Out, The Man Who Would Be King, Battle of Britain, Waterloo, Fall of the Roman Empire, National Treasure, and provided voice work for Up, An American Tale, and the Madeline Television Series. Plummer made it into Broadway in 1954 with Henry V. He won two uh, Tony Awards for his musical Cyrano and Barrymore, a play based on the life of John Barrymore. Plummer also portrayed the titular roles in King Lear and Macbeth. Plummer earned Emmys for the miniseries The Money Changers and Madeline and made television appearances in Hamlet and Isenor, The Thorn Birds, Nuremberg, Little Moon of Alban, Departures, and Muhammad Ali's Greatest Fights. Plummer was 91. Grammy Award winning artist The Weeknd performed before the smallest crowd in Super Bowl halftime show history Sunday evening, serenading the 25,000 in attendance with some of his biggest hits and backed by an orchestra, a choir, and dozens of dancers. Donning a red jacket, white shoes, black pants, and leather gloves, The Weeknd kicked off the multi-set show with the synth-pop song Star Boy in front of a white robe clad choir. He transitioned into the hills and then Can't Feel My Face, for which he exited the stage into hall mirrors and lights and sang directly into the camera while swarmed by dancers dressed identical to him and masked with what appeared to be medical uh, gauze. The singer then returned to the stage, constructed to a mirror in a skyscrape of lights with storefronts and sang I Feel It Coming, Save Your Tears and Earn It before taking to the football field Again, to join the mass singers for House of Ball, uh, Balloons, Glass, Table Girls, and the grand finale, Blinding Lights. For his hit song, the dancers covered the entire field, grooving in unison around the weekend with lights in their hands. The performance ended with an emotion, uh, sorry, with an eruption of fireworks behind the weekend with his arms outstretched and head thrown back, gazed heel woven. Ahead of Super Bowl 55, the weekend told reporters, that the crew built their stage within the Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, to ensure safety of the players and others in attendance due to COVID-19. Of the 25,000 admitted for the performance, 7,500 were vaccinated health care workers, gifted t uh, tickets to the uh, event by the National Football League as a token of appreciation. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said last month, these dedicated health care workers continue to put their own lives at risk to serve others. And we owe them our ongoing gratitude. We hope in a small way that this initiative will inspire our country and recognize these true American heroes. With the performance, the 30-year-old musician born um, Abel Tespe became the first Canadian to headline the halftime show since Shania Twain helmed the event in 2003. The Toronto, Ontario native put in $7 million of his own money for the show, for which he will not be paid, Forbes reported.
Morgan Wallen's Dangerous, the double album, is the number one album in the United States for a third consecutive week. The Billboard 200 charts dated Saturday came out after Wallen was dropped by his record label, and radio stations announced they would no longer play his music because he was seen and heard using a racial slur in a leaked video last week. The Academy of Country Music also said Wallen was no longer eligible to be nominated for the 2021 ACM Awards. Wallen, who won the ACM Award for Best uh, for New Male Artist of the Year in 2020, has apologized for the language he used while out with friends. Coming in number two on this week's album charts is Pop Smoke's Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, followed by Taylor Swift's Evermore number three, The Weekends After Hours is number four, and Lil Durk's The Voice at number five. Rounding up the top tier are Juice World's Legends Never Die number six, Ariana Grande's Position number seven, Luke Combs' What You See Is What You Get at number eight, Little Baby's My Turn at number nine, and Oniel A.A. and Ozuna's Los Dios at number 10. And finally, Denzel Washington's latest crime drama, The Little Things, is the number one film in theaters for a second consecutive week, earning an additional $2.1 million from receipts, box office mojo.com announced on Sunday. The movie, which co-stars Rami Malik and Jared Leto, is also streaming on HBO Max as part of a strategy to appeal to as many viewers as possible during the coronavirus pandemic. Coming in number two this weekend is The Crudes, A New Age, with $1.8 million, followed by The Marksman, and number three with $1 million, Wonder Woman 1984 with $905,000, and Monster Hunter at number five with $586,000. Right at the top tier are News of the World at number six with $400,000, Promising Young Woman at number seven with $220,000, Fatale number eight with $170,000, The War with Grandpa number nine with $167,000, and The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, at number 10 with $166,000. And that is the Entertainment Report for Monday, February 8th, 2021. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.